Okay, so in this tutorial I'm just going to quickly go through setting up the uh, forward kinematics, the FK stretch on the opposite side. So I'm just repeating what's happened in the previous tutorial. I'm not going to go into as much depth, but again, following this from start to finish, I'm just going to apply it to the right hand side. So we're just doing the same as we did before. So I'm actually going to do the opposite way around. So before we start setting up the stretchy controls, I'm just going to constrain this up. So remember we select the forearm, took this tie control, constraint scale, set that up there. And just before we move on, one thing we put, um, we created this new blend colours. So I'm going to copy the name, paste the name in. This was the BC underscore left arm. It wasn't the IKs. This is the FK. Um, I'm just going to put FK scale. Just so we're keeping everything that consistent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to do the last part of the tutorial because we've we've already got it, the graph sort of figured out here. So keeping it fresh in his heads, I'm just going to go um, graph inputs and outputs of the group so I select the wrist, press up graph the inputs and outputs rearrange it again so the sort of order we had I don't have to arrange it as much because it didn't depend it didn't really you know, rely on these blend colors that much so I wouldn't really have to it's a good idea just to get it set in your head so you can sort of understand what's going on. So we get this tie control. It's going to be so the tie control. Get that at the top. Is going to be putting its rotate. I mean, it's scaled into the wrists group. So to do that, it used the blend color node. So I'll click blend color to create one. I'll paste the name in because I copied it earlier so this is the right arm FK scale and now we're going to do is take the scale of not the shear the scale scale take that to color one make sure we set color two to one because if we use a zero you know that's going to put in a singularity and it'll screw that sort of part of the arm up take the output of this blank colour over and we'll actually we'll put the output to the scale so we'll put it to all the scale of that group but really we'll only be using one of the scales because we'll only be scaling you know along X and then remember we took the global IKFK put that into the blender so when it's in FK we want the FK blend to be on so I take the right put it to blender. Okay. So that should be working now. So you can see as we're scaling this joint up, it's moving. We are getting some stretching, but we just want to see this control move at the moment. Any stretching that's happening here, if you remember, is happening from the FK because this control is physically moving out, which is physically moving that measurement tool which drives the IK stretch system. So if I set this back to 1, we can actually see we're moving the control but we haven't got the scale set up yet. So the scale's not working yet. So I'll switch this back on and we'll go ahead and start adding the stretch. So what we did was I'll take this wrist control, graph the network, because I know the wrist control is connected to that switch, that stretch. And if we can't find it, what we can actually do to make it a bit lives a bit easier, go to your utilities. So I'm just dragging the top menu down, and we're working on the right. And I'm just going to, because uh, I see this condition node, it's the right stretch condition. I'm just going to graph the inputs and outputs of that, just so we can get back to that stretchy graph quite quickly. So we can see where, well we can see the graph now so we can start to rearrange it so 
with some of these things we don't really need. So I'm going to just go graph, remove selected from graph, and start rearranging these. So there's no real need to rearrange these, but it just gives a bit of space to work and it makes it easier to figure out in your head as you're working along with this. So again we had some blank colours. So I'm just going to duplicate these for each one of these joints. So just by visually spacing it out a bit, you know, it just becomes clear of what we're doing. I'm going to take these blank colours, set it back to one. Put the blender to so I'll put the blender to one as well. So remember one is the default scale. And then we take I'll have to add these two controls. Graph, add selected to graph. So we're taking the scale of these and we're inputting it into these controls. So I'll take the arm control down here and the wrist control up here. If we set these to a value of one, which is keep remem reminding ourselves that's FK on the IK FK switch. So value of 1 we take the top so we want the scale of the FK controls. So I'm going to drag and drop the FK controls. I'm going to take the scale colour 1 and let's make sure that that's the correct joint, that's the arm joint, yep. And we're finishing on the wrist end so we're not actually, we don't, if we remember the wrist end is just there as a placeholder to you know hold that position of that that oops make sure we set reset these to one. I mean a lot of the time it doesn't actually affect the rigs if we inputted this into the joint the joint would snap to that scale but it's always a good idea to make sure we're in like the T pose, the default pose before we start hooking things up, especially with constraints. You know you might have like maintain offset on and it won't snap even though it's got some sort of value in there. So if you remember this end joint is just there for the position of the wrist. So we don't actually want this end joint. So I'm gonna delete that blank colour that we made for the end joint and just with that selected I'm just gonna graph remove selected from graph. Okay, so these are the two elbow joints and then the forearm twist. So I want the scale to go into all three of these, so I'm gonna take the scale colour one. And again with these two, colour one. Okay, so now I'm going to do the the connection edit still up. I'm going to select the first blend colour, reload left. Select the next, reload right, and take the output R. Put that into the scale. Remember, it's been constrained already, but we can just click scale X to recreate that link, and it's delete the link to, you know, the IK stretch up here. Do the same here, reload left real or right, take the colour R to the scale X, real or left, real or right, colour R to the scale X, real or left, real or right, scale X. Okay. So now we've got the colour 2 in here, which we're going to set to the F the IK stretch. So the top one we're working with FK, and actually we could go ahead and test this. So now we can see stretching in, squash and stretch with these. We're now working, and we can see because we set that uh, wrist up at the start. In the last tutorial we set it up at the end, but in this one we set it up at the start. And we can see the wrist is following along, so that's working perfectly. Okay, I'll set the scales back to one on these. So the last thing we need to do is reconnect the IK up. So I'm going to drag and drop other. I'm going to take the output, colour 2. Output, colour 2. Colour 2. And colour 2. OK. So that's everything in there. What I'm going to do now is search for the name we used for the last one, which was the... remember which blank or it was.
so we rename these we can just try find so we can keep the names consistent oh, it might be a good idea to rename these so I'm just gonna okay so they're hiding up the top here so I'll copy the name just make sure we've got the same names this is a forearm paste the name in blend color and this would be the left so it's the right forearm or one Actually, it's these names here. So the left forearm twist. Copy the name. Paste it in. The right forearm twist. Next one's elbow B. And this will be the right elbow B. Elbow A. This will be the right. Elbow A, and the last one, FK switch, and this was shoulder. Make sure that's the right shoulder. Okay, so renamed them all. The last thing we need to do is connect up the blender. So get the IKFK switch, graph, add selected to graph, and drag and drop onto these blend colors. The right goes into the blender, the blender, blender, and blender again. Okay, so we've got the graph set up the same way we had before, so hopefully, if we check this, yep, you can see we're still getting the rotation in the same place, the scale is working in proportion. That's working quite nicely. Now we haven't got any scale on here, so we, we could add some scale to the hand if we wanted to scale the hand up, but I'm not really too fussed about that, it's just the scale for the arm at the moment. I'll reset these back, check if the FK is working. Um, we can see FK is working well. One thing we just want to double check as well the stretch still works, stretch, the stretch switch still works and then also we want to check on both of these that if we move these IKs you can see the IK stretch has been switched off which is what we want, we don't want the IK messing up with the FK stretch so we can see moving these about that will be moving that distance dimension tool so it will be driving that graph to stretch but that stretch isn't reaching the joint so that's that's working as we expected so that's good okay so that's how we can set up the, the FK stretch and you can see here by just going through step by step we can create the IK, create the FK, create IK FK switch create the IK scale, FK scale, switch between them you know have different follows and just doing it uh, a piece at a time it can be quite complicated in some spots but just building it up in small blocks each time in each section we can tackle these quite big rigging problems but tackle them in small chunks so they're quite easy to handle so now we've pretty much got this entire rig finished so just show the polygons um, we've got the spine with the arms with the IKFK the stretch the ribbons in there you know for the funky controls we've got all this set up um, got the antennas, the antennas can follow got the eye controls up here one thing next we need to add just one last little bit is to add the eyeballs in so if we bring the mesh back here and it, oops oh, you can see here if we bring back the mesh we've actually got a scale in the global scale so all that time we were actually working with a scale that rig and just to further you know show off the character node which is probably the golden rule of rigging is with this character node you know now we've got that set up 
all the stretchiness you know of the FK that we've just set up all this stretchy is working whilst the entire rig's been scaled up so it just shows that keeping things in order really pays off because this is still working at any scale so the next thing, last thing we need to do is just add in something to get these eyes to look about, get these eyes some control and then we're going to leave this rigging tutorial off at that point and then this rig if you guys are interested in facial animation is going to go off into the facial animation tutorials.